Hi, and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll show you three different ways to create a navigation drawer using fling, pull, and drag in Protopie. Drawers are often utilized when leading users to top-level destinations or frequent app functions. Many variations exist like the standard drawer, modal drawer, bottom drawer, and you can choose to show or hide them depending on the layout of your design. But we won't get deep into that. In this demo, we'll focus on a drawer that lets us hide sections inside it, which is useful for whenever screen space is limited. The power of Protopie means that there are often many ways to do the same thing, and we'll show you how. Let's go ahead with method number one, using the fling trigger. Open our Pi file in Studio. Add a fling trigger to the layer named Side Menu. Leave the default to the right direction set. Now add a move response to the side menu layer. Set its position to move to and enter zero for X. Let's preview. Uh-oh, nothing happens. This is because the fling trigger has been set on the side menu layer, which is fully off screen. We can't actually grab it when we preview. How do we fix this? Let's add some extra touch area to the layer. With the side menu layer selected, Enable the touch area setting in the properties panel and set the touch area value of the right side to 30 pixels. Do you notice the purple region? That's our touch area. Now let's preview again. It works, but we can only open the menu at the moment. Let's add the ability to fling it back closed. Add another fling trigger to the side menu layer, but this time set the direction to the left. Once again, add a move response to the side menu layer, set its position to move to, and enter negative 300 for X. Now we should be able to open and close the menu. So that's the first method, using the fling trigger. Let's see how to do the same thing with method number two, using the pull trigger. But first, let's turn off the fling triggers. Quick pro tip, simply click the first trigger, hold shift on your keyboard, then click the second trigger. Group them with Command-G on Mac or Control-G on Windows and disable the triggers in one go. Like triggers and responses, you can also rename a group. Let's name this Fling Example. On to the next example. Add a pull trigger to the side menu layer. Leave the default to the right direction selected and enter a distance of 300 pixels. And that's it. Go ahead and preview. You can open and close the menu just like you did before but with only a single trigger. It couldn't be easier. So let's disable the pull trigger and move on to our last method of this demo, using the drag trigger. Select the side menu layer once more and add a drag trigger to it. Then add a move response underneath it. Let's preview this first and see what will happen. Notice how you can drag the menu all over the place? We'll need to set some limits. First, restrict dragging to the horizontal direction only. Next, beside Limit, choose Limit to Screen. Preview again. Hmm, something's not quite right. We've set the limit to have the object always within the bounds of the screen, but we need the object sometimes positioned off screen for when the menu is closed or partially open. How do we fix this? By setting a custom limit instead. Change the option for Limit to Custom Limit. Set the minimum X position to negative 300 and the maximum X position to zero. Let's preview again. We're getting there. The menu is now draggable to its fully open position and when it's closed again. Well, almost. Take a closer look at how it's hard to get the menu fully closed. With the side menu layer selected, add a touch up trigger. Doing this allows us to activate a response once our layer is dragged and let go. Next, you need to make a decision. If the X position of the menu is less than negative 150 pixels, we want to move the menu to its fully closed position. If it's negative 150 pixels or greater, we'll move the menu to its fully open position. Whenever we want to make a decision, we can use a condition. Conditions help us set up the parameters that must be satisfied for our response to be activated. Add a condition. You'll find it right here, under all of Protopie's responses. A condition is divided into three parts. At the top, select the property of the object you'd like to compare. In our case, the X property of the side menu layer. 
In the middle section, there are a bunch of icons. These are called operators. Choose the less than operator. In the bottom section, specify what you want to compare the X property of the side menu layer to. In this case, we want to compare it against a value. Specify negative 150. Before moving on, let's examine what we just did. We set up a condition to check if the value of X position of the side menu layer is less than negative 150. If so, any responses we create under this condition will be activated. Add a move response under this condition to the side menu layer and set it to move to negative 300 pixels. Let's preview. Drag out the menu just a little bit and release. It snaps shut. Drag it again, this time past the halfway point. When we release, it stays put. Can you guess our next step? Yes, we need a second condition. Another pro tip, we can repeat the same previous steps or we can save a bit of time and duplicate the condition and response we've just done and customize it a bit. We're all about saving time, so let's take that route. Select the first condition and press Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. This duplicates the condition and all responses underneath. Click the second condition. Change the operator from less than to greater than or equal. This way, we include the exact value of negative 150 pixels. Now click the move response underneath. Change it to move to zero pixels, which is the position when it's fully opened. Lastly, you can add an elegant overlay to appear when the side menu is moved into the screen. Create a chain trigger with the X property of the side menu. Add an opacity response to the overlay layer and configure it as shown here. Don't worry if you don't fully understand this step. We'll cover chain in more detail in another lesson. Let's preview again. It works great! So to sum up, what's the difference between these three options? When you use the fling trigger, the menu moves after you lift your finger. Meanwhile, with the pull trigger, the menu moves with your finger. And the experience we created using the drag trigger gave us exactly the same experience that pull automated for us. So why use drag? This way gives you the most flexibility. For example, by adjusting your conditions, you can make the distinction point between open and closed something other than the halfway point. Or you could have the menu snap closed with a different animation than when it snaps open. And let's say you needed to make a multi-level menu that stays out part way to reveal an icon menu, and then all the way to reveal a text menu. Using the drag trigger is certainly the way to go. You'll discover in your protopie journey that there are often many ways to do the same thing. Explore and discover why one way might be right for you. See you in the next one.